Hello. In this video, we're going to look at some advanced curve sketching. This is section 4.5 in your textbook. So the motivation for this section would be graphing some really crazy function like this. 9, x minus 1, x plus 3 over x minus 3 squared. How would you graph something like this without a computer, without access to Desmos? Now, you might be able to figure out that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals to positive 3, and you can see that here on the graph. You might even be able to figure out that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 9, which you can see here on the graph because of the rules from precalculus. But the rest of this graph, the, the minimum, all those other things, they're going to be quite challenging to do without calculus. And so calculus is going to allow us to find things like this concave down or concave up nature, this relative minimum or a relative maximum. And so we're going to look at using the methods of calculus to do curve sketching, to graph functions like this. And so here are our steps for sketching a graph. So step one is we're going to find the domain of the given function. It's important to write down the domain. Sometimes the question will ask you for the domain, but even if they don't, it's important so you know where the graph should be existing. Step two, find the x and y intercepts of fx. If we find the x and y intercepts, it will help us to graph the function because it will give us some concrete points we can draw on the graph. Step three, we're going to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. The horizontal asymptotes come from the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of fx, and the vertical asymptotes come from the limit x approaches a from the left or a from the right of fx, where a is that non-permissible value. Step four, we're going to calculate f prime and f double prime. Now, sometimes these are done for you on a question, sometimes you have to do it yourself. Um, we'll look at some different examples. Step five, we have to create the sine diagram for f of x, for f prime of x, and for f double prime of x. Then step six, we're going to find the intervals of increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, local min, local max, inflection points. We're going to find all those pieces of information that the sine diagrams give us. And then step seven, we're going to put all this together to sketch the graph. So let's try an example here. We have our function. And they've actually calculated the first and second derivative for you. Now, this is common on a test or an exam. They'll often give you the first and second derivative. Not always, but often, because they're going to test you on your derivative knowledge in the previous questions. Here, they don't want you to make a mistake doing the derivative because then it will mess up the rest of your work. So they're giving you the derivative and the second derivative, not testing your derivative knowledge, but testing your curve sketching knowledge. Uh, but just to note, sometimes these won't be fully factored, and we'll look at examples where you still have to do some factoring on these. So step one, let's find that domain. So step one here, we're going to find the domain. The domain is using our pre-cal knowledge, so you look at the function and you say, well, is there any roots, are there any denominators, anything that might give you something for the domain, and yes, in this case, x could not be zero. So the domain will be minus infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. So for step number two, we're going to go ahead and find the x and y intercepts. The x intercepts come from the numerator, so you can clearly see here. If you set x minus one equal to zero, you get an x intercept at x equals one. So we've got an x intercept at one and zero. To find the y intercept, we let x equal to zero, so we find f of zero which is 0 minus 1 over 0 squared, which is undefined. So that means there is no y-intercept. All right, step number three, let's find the asymptotes. So because over here x could not equal 0, we know that that's not part of the domain. That's where we're going to check for vertical asymptotes. And because we're going to plus and minus infinity, we can check our horizontal asymptotes as well. So let's do the limit x approaches infinity of x minus 1 over x squared. So we can use the quotient theorem here to drop everything except for the x and the x squared. And that's just going to give you 1 over x, which is going to give you 0. You have to check as x goes to negative infinity. 9 times out of 10, this is going to give you the exact same value. But every once in a while, there's a graph that does something different when x goes to negative infinity. They tend to be graphs with radicals or absolute values. But for this example here, you get x over x squared, which simplifies, of course, to 1 over x. 1 over x as x goes to negative infinity is also 0. So this gives us a horizontal asymptote at y 
equal to zero. Let's go ahead and find that vertical asymptote. So we do the limit, x approaches zero from the left, of x minus one over x squared. Now usually we'd use a sine diagram to figure out this limit, and so we're just gonna hold off here on actually figuring out these limits. We're gonna come back to this step because we need our sine diagram of the original function, and we don't have that handy yet. So we're just gonna pause here on step three and we'll come back to this in a little bit once we actually get our sine diagrams written down. So step four, we of course need to calculate the derivatives and they've already done that for us. So this is step four, thanks to the question makers, they've got us our derivatives. So let's go ahead and jump right to step number five. Let's calculate the sine diagrams. So I'm gonna do the sine diagram for f and f prime and f double prime. I'm gonna stack them all above each other so we have all three pieces of information and we can see them all as we work on it. So if you look at the original function, it's undefined at zero. And that's an even power. And then we've got a root at x equals to one. Pick a number bigger than one, say 10, we'll get positive, negative, negative. So what this means is the function is going to be below the x-axis here and above the x-axis here. And right away, this tells us we can go back to our other step and we can finish off the horizontal asymptote, or vertical asymptote, I should say. So here, when x is to the left of zero, it says the function is negative, so we get negative infinity. When x is uh, to the, sorry, one of these should be positive, one of these should be negative. Let's make this one positive. So when x is to the right of zero, we're still getting negative infinity. So here we have a vertical asymptote at x equals to zero. So popping back to our sine diagram, so let's do the next one. We're gonna find f prime the sine diagram, again it's undefined at zero, but this time it's a uh, odd power, so we don't have to label anything, and we've got a zero here when x is equal to two. Now we pick a number bigger than two, say 10, we're going to definitely get a negative number here. So this is gonna be negative, positive, negative. Now what that means is the graph is decreasing, increasing, decreasing. It's tempting to label this a relative minimum because it looks like a valley, but it's not because it's not part of the original function. The function is not defined at x equals to zero, so it's not a relative minimum. But the next part is definitely a relative maximum here. This is gonna be a rel max because it's the top of a hill. And we can go ahead and find the sine diagram for the second derivative. So it's undefined again at zero, and that's gonna be even. Then we've got another value at three. Again, notice I'm doing these roughly to scale. The number one is here, the number two is here, the number three is here. It helps if you put them to scale. So pick a number bigger than three, say 10, we're gonna get positive, negative, negative. So concave down, concave down, concave up. Again, we notice right here, it's switching between negative and positive, so this is gonna be an inflection point right here. So we figured out we've got an inflection point, we figured out we've got a relative maximum, that's definitely helpful for drawing the graph. Let's go ahead and write down everything we've discovered from the sine diagrams. So this is gonna be step six here. We can label our increasing. We know it's increasing from zero to two. It is decreasing on negative infinity to zero, union two to infinity. It's concave up on the interval three to infinity. And it is concave down, concave down on the interval negative infinity to zero, union zero to three. Again, remember, we don't include the zero here because zero is not part of the domain, so that's why we can't just go straight negative infinity to three. Uh, we did find a relative maximum at x equals two and an inflection point at x equals to three, so we should figure out those actual values. So we'll calculate f of two. That'll be two minus one over two squared, so one over four. This is gonna be our rel max. And f of three, which is equal to 
3 minus 1 over 3 squared, so 2 over 9. This is going to be our inflection point. So let's take all this information that we have and sketch a graph. So you draw yourself a nice big axis. Label it x and fx. And we're going to start putting all the points that we know. So we know that there's an x-intercept at x equals to 1. We know that there is uh, asymptote at, well, there's a vertical asymptote at 0, so we can put that on here. Uh, put that down here. So we'll label, we've got a vertical asymptote, x equal to 0. We've got ourselves a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And so we'll label that too. Horizontal asymptote y equal to 0. We also found these relative maximum and relative minimum points. Uh, so the next one was at 2. So if this is 1, 2, 3. So over at 2, we found that there was a maximum at 2 and a quarter. Now, technically, based on my scale, 2 and a quarter would be down here, but that's going to be too small to see. And so I'm going to put 2 and a quarter probably up here. I'm going to label this on the y-axis as 1 quarter. And then we also know that at 3, there's going to be an inflection point. Now, 2 over 9, is that bigger or smaller than a quarter? Is it going to be up here? Is that 2 over 9, or is it maybe down there? We have to do a little bit of thinking. Uh, 2 over 9 versus 1 over 4, it's, it's hard to say which is bigger without a calculator. Uh, but in fact, 2 over 9 is less, and if you need a quick little refresher, if you're comparing 1 over 4 and 2 over 9, make the denominators the same. So this will become 9 over 36, and this will become 8 over 36. So 9 over 36 is clearly bigger. So this is going to be down a little bit, maybe here-ish. This is going to be 2 over 9. All right, now we can also use some information about our asymptote. We know that as we approach the asymptote, it goes to negative infinity. So down here, we know it's going down like this and down like this. So that's our graph going down over there. Now we know... We'll start on this section. Based on our sign diagrams, we have the following information. The function should be below the x-axis, it should be decreasing, and it should be concave down. So those pieces of information tell us the graph should look like this. We're going to start below the x-axis, so somewhere here. It should be decreasing, and it should be a nice concave down shape. So we've got one of these swooshes. Now, as you draw, you're going to sometimes need to erase things, and that's totally fine. So we've got something like this. We've got a nice shape like that going on up here. And we should approach both asymptotes. So you're approaching this asymptote here and approaching this asymptote down here. All right, now let's look at the next section. Here, again, it's still going to be below the x-axis, but it's going to be increasing, and it's going to be concave down. This whole section is concave down. We've got to go out at that maximum, concave down here. And then the inflection point will change it to being concave up, still decrease until we hit our asymptote. So this section is going to look like this. We're going to go like this, round it out. Oh, let's try that again. Round it out. And then there we go. Now again, you might see that I missed my inflection point, and that's fine. We're just going to go ahead and move that point over here. So we're going to move it to right about here. And that's totally fine. Sometimes you have to move points as you're working on it because the point might not be exactly where you wanted it to be. Same thing with the 2 over 9. We're just going to move that down to here. Or maybe even down to about there. If you don't like to label it on the y-axis, you're always welcome to just label the point here 2 and 1 quarter. Call it a rel max. And then label the point over here, 3 and 2 over 9, as your inflection point. The important part is that it is going concave down here and then concave up from here, so that we have that nice inflection. And once we've got that, we've sketched our graph. Um, I'll go ahead and show you Desmos in a second here. Uh, maybe I want to clean that up just a little bit. 
Again, it, it is tricky to draw these things to make sure your, your concavity looks right. Maybe I'm going to just change that just a bit here. Want to make sure we really see it being concave down on the section before we hit the three. So let's try again. Let's go like this. So concave down and then concave up. There we go. That looks nicer. So let's look on Desmos and see how our sketch turned out. So we can see here on Desmos, we've got a sketch of the graph. We've got the swoosh going over in the bottom left corner. We've got it coming up here to our relative maximum at two and a quarter. Uh, it's hard to see that concavity change. You almost have to have to zoom in a little bit here. It see is definitely is first concave down, but then once you get further out, you can see it becomes eventually concave up as we approach that horizontal asymptote. So I'd say our sketch overall was pretty accurate. So let's try a couple clicker questions. Which of the following is the correct sign diagram for the function fx equals negative nine x squared minus nine over x to the four? All right, so this is a classic example where they have not factored the x squared minus nine. You need to factor that as x minus three, x plus three. So if you do that factoring, you're going to end up with roots at 3 and negative 3. Uh, if you pick a number bigger than 3, say 10, you're definitely going to be getting a negative because of that negative sign here, which means you're going to go negative, positive, positive, negative, and the answer is D. Based on the sign diagram for fx, which graph is impossible? So this is the sign diagram for fx. So the sign diagram says that fx should have a vertical asymptote at zero, and they all have those. It should have an x-intercept at nine. Uh, the scale might be a bit different for each graph, but they definitely have x-intercepts at nine. But it should always be above the x-axis. And so the graph that's impossible is C. Interesting, of course, that the sign diagram for fx doesn't give us a lot of information. All three of these potentially fit the information given for fx, even this weird one over here. So that's why we need the sign diagram, not just for f, but also for f prime and f double prime. But even just fx does give us enough information to rule out graph C. Based on the sign diagram for f prime, which graph is possible? So now we have the sign diagram for f prime x. So for this one, we know the graph is going to be increasing, decreasing, and then decreasing again. Well, this graph is decreasing to start off with, so it's definitely not A. B is also decreasing to start off, so it's definitely not B. Now let's look at the difference between C and D. Well, C is increasing, so that seems possible. Um, it's got, so well, then it just seems to be keep on increasing, so I don't think it's C. Let's see if it's D. Does it line up? Well, it increases. Then it's got a horizontal tangent line, then it decreases, then it's got another horizontal tangent line, and then decreases again. So definitely the graph would be D. So let's do another curve sketching example here. We have the function nine, minus, nine times x minus one times x plus three over x minus three squared, and then they've calculated the derivative and the second derivative for us. So let's go ahead and start with the domain. So the domain of the function is clearly going to be negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. 3 is the only number we have to exclude from that domain. We can go ahead and find uh, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So let's see what we have. Well, definitely there's going to be x-intercepts at x equal to 1 and x equal to negative 3. So we could write those down. As our x-intercepts. So 1 and 0, negative 3 and 0. For our y-intercept, we go f of 0, which gives us 9 times negative 1 times 3 over negative 3 squared. So that'll cancel with the 9, giving us negative 3. So we've got ourselves a y-intercept at negative 3 and 0. All right, let's go ahead and find those limits. So limit x approaches infinity, 
of 9, x minus 1, x plus 3, over x minus 3 squared. We're going to use that quotient theorem to help us out. So we get to drop everything except for the highest powers of x. So you get a 9, an x, another x, over x squared, giving you just 9. So we go ahead and do the same thing as x approaches negative infinity. 9x minus 1, x plus 3, over x minus 3 squared. Using the quotient theorem, we get to drop everything except for those highest powers of x. So 9x x over x squared. The, not, the x's will all cancel, giving you just 9 again. So this means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 9. Now again, for the vertical asymptote, we're going to need to use those sign diagrams. So you can set it up right now if you want, but we won't be able to fully solve it until we have the sign diagram. So we have vertical asymptote. We're going to check the limit. x approaches 3 of 9 x minus 1 x plus 3 over x minus 3 squared and we'll approach from the left and we're also going to approach from the right again when we do these one-sided limits we use the sine diagram because again as just a reminder you plug in 3 here and you get a 0 on the bottom but you don't get a 0 on the top so it means you can't do any factor cancelling, and so what we're trying to do instead is figure out what type of infinity we have. And that comes from the sine diagram. So let's go ahead and draw those sine diagrams. So back over here, we're going to draw the sine diagram for f, for f prime, and for f double prime. Well, for f, we're going to have a lot of points to look at. We've got one at 1. Got one at minus three, and then we've got one at positive three. This one is even. So pick a number bigger than three, say 10, positive, positive, negative, positive. So this tells us, and we can go ahead and finish all the sign diagrams just to keep them in order, but this will tell us what we have for our vertical asymptote. Now for the second derivative, or for the first derivative, we have one at zero, so we'll try to keep that roughly in line. Right there, we've got zero. And then we've still got that one at three. Pick a number bigger than three, say 10, because of that negative sign, we're gonna get negative, so negative, positive, negative. Decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and that tells us right here, we're going to have ourselves a rel min. Finally, we've got one here for the second derivative. It looks like this gives us x equal to negative 3 over 2. So that's going to be roughly between the 0 and the negative 3, so roughly about there, negative 3 over 2. Still undefined at 3, and that's even again. So positive, positive, negative, concave down, concave up, concave up. So we've got ourselves an inflection point. Right there. So we'll finish off the vertical asymptote. We can see right here as we approach 3 from either the left or the right we have positive so we're going to be getting positive infinity for both of those. So these are both positive infinity. So that tells us we have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 3. Now we're going to need to write the intervals of increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, all that good stuff. So we can put that here maybe. We've got increasing. We've got decreasing. We've got concave up and we've got concave down. So let's see what we have for those intervals. So it's increasing on 0 to 3 decreasing on negative infinity to zero, union three to infinity. It's concave up on negative three over two. 
to 3. And then again, we have to union it 3 to infinity. We can't try to cheat because it's undefined at x equals to 3. And then we have concave down from negative infinity to negative 3 over 2. Now we should also note that we are looking for the relative minimum and we're looking for that inflection point. So we're going to need to calculate a few values here. So the minimum is at f of 0, but thankfully we already calculated f of 0. If you look back, f of 0 was the y-intercept, so we can find that point right there. There's our rel min. But we didn't calculate the other one. The inflection point is at negative 3 over 2. And so I encourage you to pause the video here and try to calculate f of negative 3 over 2. You're going to plug that into the original function, work on all the fraction work, and see what you get. So hopefully you gave it a try. I'll work it out here for us. So we're going to get 9 times negative 3 over 2 minus 1. Negative 3 over 2 plus 3 over negative 3 over 2 minus 3 squared. So let's work these one at a time. This will be minus 5 over 2. And this is going to be positive 3 over 2. This in the bottom will be ni minus 9 over 2, all squared. All right. So if we combine all that in the numerator, we're going to get 9, and then times 5 and 3, I guess we could put that as a minus 15, over 4, over... 81 over 4. Now thankfully, we can cancel those 4s. Again, if you're wondering why, when you do this division here, you flip and multiply. So we're going to get ourselves 9 times negative 15 over 81. We can go ahead and cancel the 9 with the 81 giving you 9. So negative 15 over 9, you can cancel the 3, and you're going to get negative 5 over 3. So there's our inflection point. Now we're going to put all this together on our nice graph. So draw a nice big axis, make lots of room, x, fx. We've got to throw those intercepts on the graph, so we've got one at 1. This is at, you could again label it if you want, 1 and 0. Got another, another intercept over at negative 3, so maybe about here. Negative 3 and 0. Got a y intercept at 0 and negative 3. And that's also a rel min. We have an inflection point at negative 3 over 2, which is uh, somewhere about here ish. And then negative 5 over 3, so maybe we'll put that right about there. Negative 3 over 2, negative 5 over 3. That is our inflection point. We have a vertical asymptote over at 3. That might end up being too far over. Might need to back that up just a tad. Maybe here. So there we have a vertical asymptote at x equal to 3. And we have our horizontal asymptote at x equal to 9. So again, scale is not the most important thing as long as everything is labeled. That's the key. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 9. Well, technically, I guess it would be, if you want it to be technical, we are talking about x and fx, so maybe we could call this f of x equals 9, just to be technical. Okay, so we've got uh, all of our pieces of information labeled on the graph. We're going to start over here on the far left. Looking at the sign diagram, we know the graph should be above the x-axis. It should be decreasing, and it should be concave down. So we're going to have something like that as we go here. Uh, eventually, it's going to get to this point. Then it's going to go through the axis. 
keep on going. It's got to be concave down this whole time until we inflect and become concave up. And based on my diagram, this is a little tricky to draw because it's got to be going concave down and then concave up. So I've spaced things a little tricky to actually draw this. So I'm going to do my best here. But this means my asymptote is probably a bit too high on the graph to actually get all the way up to it. If I just leave it like this, it doesn't look like I'm approaching that asymptote. So again, this is sometimes what you got to do. You start drawing features and then later on you have to erase them and move them down. So we're just going to move that asymptote all the way down to where my graph looks like it should be. So now I'm going to draw right over here. And that's how I tend to do these questions and I would recommend you do the same thing. You can draw your features and then feel free to move them around because you need to make sure your graph looks reasonable, looks nice and smooth. So there's your horizontal asymptote. We've got a relative minimum. Then we're going to go ahead and swoop through the minimum and go on up. We're going to approach that asymptote, the vertical asymptote. Some students wonder about crossing the horizontal asymptote again. You're totally fine to cross horizontal asymptote. It's, it's not a big deal, so just cross on through. Now over on the right hand side, this portion here, we know that it's positive. We know that it's going to be decreasing and concave up, so we get ourselves a little swoosh there. And there's our graph. I encourage you to pull this graph up on Desmos, check on your phone, and see how this compares to what we graphed. If you take a look and do the zooming properly, you should see that our graph is pretty accurate compared to the one on Desmos. Now for homework, I want you to try a few of these curve sketching examples. So we have here curve sketching question number one. So you just type in the tiny URL there for the solution. Uh, so here's your function and the derivative and the second derivative. Just a bit of a heads up though, if you notice in these denominators, we don't have ourselves a factoring. And so these definitely have not been fully factored. Make sure you factor those. Otherwise, you won't get the proper sign diagrams. So try this one on your own. Uh, give it your best shot and then watch the video to make sure you did it correctly. And here's a second one for you to try. In this case, we actually have to calculate the derivative and the second derivative by hand. So make sure you calculate those derivatives. For this one, you don't necessarily have to draw the sign diagram for fx. So you can omit the fx sign diagram. Just because of the way it's set out, I don't want you trying to factor this thing. So don't worry about factoring fx, uh, but go ahead and find the derivative and the second derivative and draw their sign diagrams. Uh, and here is going to be the tiny URL with the solution. So in the next video, we'll look at some further examples of these, and eventually we're going to unlock that big worksheet you have on curve sketching where there's a bunch of examples. Uh, but until then, make sure you try these two, and then we'll look at some future examples in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.